Hi, it's Eliana at Awakening Cosmic Reality Show. And today I have Jenny Lee, Jenny Lee back with me. How are you, Jenny? I'm good. And we're both very busy at this time and this age. I have our world that's changing. I think, uh, I think you've been just as tired as I have been just going and going and nonstop, right? Yeah, I've been busy and I've just been doing a lot of remote viewing. I've been working with a psychologist friend of mine who's a spiritual psychologist and we're doing a two part on the energy shift upgrades um, and what's happening on this world, plus some other things that are like, she had a lot of questions for me and then some other people had questions for me. So she's like, you should just pull these questions together, what me and her did and some other questions. And it's like, she doesn't want her voice heard on the audio of the right. Q&A. So she's like, just bundle everything together. Don't hyper focus on one subject. Just cover the subjects in order and categories and just give the updates honestly and genuinely and, and put it out there. And those who resonate will understand what this is. Right. That's good. Mm -hmm. I think people are down to just want true, 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 true information. They are so over being entertained. They're over it. I noticed that they've had it. They're like, let's get to the truth. That's the good thing about it. Yeah. It's like, and our session, like the first part of the energy shift update, it's like, be your genuine, honest self. Does There's nothing, if you have nothing to hide, there's nothing to hide. If you're genuinely right. honest. And, and, and that reading said that there's a lot of two-faced people in the background, players in the background, in the system that are not truthful, genuine, or completely honest. And... Mm -hmm they'll be shown for who they are though the truth will come out one way or another i'm like that's interesting that's good it should happen truth should be revealed and anybody who's betraying people who's not honest that needs to be revealed exposed for what it is in process yeah. oh yeah and i think that's what the they know what we've done here and they see it and they observe it no matter what they're going to show it that's the thing that they like, no, it's, it's going to be fine. I'm like, no, you can't hide it. Just like the new quantum system. It's all detailed and it's foul proof and it knows what you're doing. So it's great. It's, mm -hmm. We're coming into the age that it needs to happen. Um, and so it's a, it's a good thing of the, where we're going. And I'm more relaxed on the fact that I'm seeing the process and you're kind of, we're not as guarded. We're kind of laid back, but we still have stuff to do. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm writing 13 books. I'm prepping new courses. I'm doing this frequency reading course that I'm plan planning. It's called the Matryoshka and it reads all the frequencies of, of the soul, of the health of the body, of everything, the truth. Like it has a frequency for everything. And then it has a description of what that means actually for the person's health, well-being, whatever. Like it gives you a truth frequency and it also gives you an idea of what's going on everywhere. It, it right. strips down things to the rawest form of giving you the rawest truth. Good. To give the, That's the best. Yeah, to give the people tools to work with it. I did it on myself and it exposed a lot of things of people who are not being real or truthful for me. It actually showed me who these people are behind the scenes, the players who are hiding something from me or not being truthful with me, or they're just making excuses. I'm like, wow, uh, that shows me a truth that I didn't expect to find, but I'm like, wow, okay, let's have a closer look at these people and what they're doing. And it revealed so much to me. And I went back and I did the report over and over again. And he kept giving layers of truth about myself, about others, like insights. The raw stripped truth. Right. Um, I'm like, how did, how did I not see this before? It's because I'm not focusing on people. I'm, I'm, I just expect that everybody's wonderful and beautiful and that they act with honor and generosity and not betrayal not that betrayal but it seems that people are actors and people do things behind the scenes 
okay, that's on them. How they act is on them. I will not confront them. I will not engage them on or call them out on this behavior. That's something for them to figure out. I will be honorable, truthful, and honest. If I work with you, I work with you. What you do behind the scenes, and if you betray me, I'll just let that go, but I will not engage further on any level that is beyond the work. I just won't. Right. And I always say just give it to the light and they take care of it. Oh, yeah. Give it to the light and they take care of it. But these old systems that the hierarchy, the patriarchy, the matriarchy, that's falling off the bandwagon. It is being stripped away because that's an old system or systems of control not working for us anymore. They're going away. Bye bye. Yep. And that's a good thing. It is a very good thing. And seeing yourself on all aspects of the soul is also a good thing to see all the honesty, all the dishonesty, all, all of it is shown, like the good, the bad, and in between. That system really, it was for me, it was like, wow, why didn't I work with this 15 years ago when I first learned it? It's because I wasn't ready to truly understand these frequencies and observations and what comes right. in. I'm not doing the reading. It comes from upstairs. It comes from the highest source of the universe, source creator, whatever you want to call it. It comes from that. That's where the reading is coming from. It's not coming from me, the person down here. It's right. not me doing it. It's the, the higher sources upstairs giving the information for this reading. Right. Exactly. It's just, we're just the conduit of the information and then we relay it the way they present it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It's not something that we're not thinking about when we do readings. We're just in the moment and then it comes. That's mm -hmm. the whole thing that changes. I couldn't hold all that information that comes. It'd be, in, it'd be too hard. It'd yeah. be insane. And, and the system allows you to type in the frequency to write in the observations and then it gives you a guide of the breakdown of all the frequencies and why it is that way and like what that is so it has keys of explanations and i'm still working on it because it's a it's an old russian system that they trained psychics psychic spies to work in it that's good yeah so and i couldn't even find much about it on the internet except in a book a psychology book where they work with that system for psychological therapy apparently and i'm like wow so psychologists know about this some psychologist and i'm like well that this thing does exist i'm ready to work with it i did it on myself it gave me a lot of info that i didn't know about and i'm like i'm excited when i'm ready i will I will reveal the course and do it. Right now I'm working on it. So I'm, I'm really busy with it. I'm happy. I'm doing other things as well. So for me, I'm like, I have stuff to do. I'm real. I, you have stuff to do. We all work. We, right. we, we have interests. We have hobbies. We're writing books. We're doing it. Right. And I think like um, a lot of these people think like the Rike Masters, you know, Akashic records. I'm like, and I don't, Spirit's saying to me, he goes, do, do they understand that that resides in 3D? Do they understand that you can't get the information the same way anymore? That you have to go into a new process, a new idea, a new concept, and they're still cycling the same thing. And it's like, it doesn't work because it's not in that same process anymore. And people are like, they, they're not paying attention to it. You know, the change of it, the change of the energy that's changed. Well, that's why I like to try different systems to see right. what the toolkits can offer because it can all offer good things in its own way. Like I still do Akashic readings because they mm -hmm. do bring the inner soul aspect, what the soul is going through. But I also want the hertz, the vibration, frequency of all the that's things. There's a 4D library and they've showed me that. They're like, that is not the same library. So you're probably tapping into the new one and not even realize like this is new and i'll tell you why because the old one was different where you see the writings go across this one the writing goes down and there's light every time you read it you know and i was like this ain't the same place and they're like nope so it's changed 
how it's come in and it's faster, it seems like. Yeah, so. and it's, exactly. And even the system that, that Matryoshka that I was taught, like when I looked at my notes, I'm not the same person that I was 15 years ago when I first started learning about psychics and psychic stuff and how to be a psychic. I'm like, um, all of this needs to be updated and upgraded because right. it's not working the same way anymore. It just needs to be more honed, detailed. It needs to be upgraded. Right. And yeah, it's, it does. Yeah, and it's not something, this is a course that is for people that already are clairvoyance, claircognizant, clairsentient, and clairaudient. They need to be able to be able to do those aspects of the abilities to read the frequencies because if they're not able to read the frequencies, you're like you get to know the system, but if you can't retrieve the vibration, mm -hmm. the hertz from you know energy, it's like yeah. you have to have some concept of psychic ability within the clairs to do the vibrational frequency right aspects of it for me i can do it now i couldn't do it 15 years ago when i learned it because i was just starting out and that's fine sometimes we forget about the good tools that we have what we learned and then we can upgrade them later on and work with them if they work well for us and others right yeah it's changed i mean the stuff i'm downloading now they're like nothing is applied to 3d like nothing they're like just describe it the way you get it and download it and some will get it and some will not and some will do the research and some will not so and that's what i'm doing i'm just like it's gonna fall in line the way it needs to and yeah that's the best thing because we are we're not in the 3d process whatsoever mm, no that's just a crumbling view that you're seeing it's not a realistic process anymore yeah of anything. yeah and, and what we're seeing on 3d earth is these systems falling apart and new energetic frequencies coming in to replace that clean house what i got from that energy update is like clean house clean house clean the house clean everything from top to right. bottom bottom to top clean it all out and start creating new better things because yeah. none of the old stuff you can fix anymore you can try yeah. As they said, they go, once you see something crumble on 3D, you're going to see something to 4D stand up. And that's the thing. Even with the banking system, I told them, I said, it's, that's not, it's not going to be the way you think it is. It's going to be up one day and it's going to be down the next day and then it'll be up again. Mm -hmm. So when you download new systems, they, they have to try the new system and then it is all implemented. And that's the yeah. way things are going to happen. Well, and I've told people this a hundred times never keep your money in one place in one bank make sure you have money in several banks make sure you have investments in gold silver a little bit of crypto if you want so that make sure you have investments in property in land because right. that's very important self-sustainability yeah. going off grid actually creating something different self-sustainable in your own land right it could be an acre, it could be half an acre, it could be 8,000 square feet, whatever you want and feel comfortable with as your land. That's beautiful. I, I got my trees trimmed, my 100 foot trees. I have four or five of them. They're right. beautiful. They've survived. They've thrived because I had a good arborist who works with nature, who's very intuitive. He's very artistic. His crew were wonderful, did sustainable trimming, beautiful. We put our fences back, you know, the we've beautified everything. The grass is growing, the plants are growing, the food is growing, the animals yeah. are here. It looks gorgeous. Um, you know, we had to take apart some stuff and put it back together, but we had pictures of their originals, and man, does it look good. Like, awesome. I'm so happy. Yeah, and you don't have to do the old way system because it doesn't work. We redid everything, but it looks slightly different, but it looks good because we put the time and the care 
into the nature that we have in our space on the land. That's good. Yeah. That is, I really think. So I, I think that's changing in any way. It's just, like I said, the spring, I thought that vegetables are going to be a lot bigger and the trees are going to be nourished different. You're going to see that they are getting new air, new water, new development, and you're going to see that fruits blossom from that situation, you mm -hmm. know, so coming. And that's how you know things are changing because nature's going to show you because they need the same nutrients and they need the same air and the water. And that's, what's going to show you the truth. I mean, I've been telling people for six months, I go, the Kim trails have changed to the clean trails. They had to clean up the mess, you know, and you know, people think this us, it's not the same. Um, and so, and how you're going to know that is nature's going to show you. It's yeah. Show you. The, well, the old Kim trails, they had acid in them that was being dumped on the trees, on the plants. And you can, you, the plants were withering, turning yellow. The trees were turning yellow. And I've kept an eye on that. A lot of things shriveled up and just died out. And now yeah. things are coming back and in growing and trees look more greener. So the acid seems to be going away and the pH balance is returning to the roots of the trees and the plants. Right. And I think that, I think the last process that you're gonna see is a uh, spirit showed me says when you start to see water and you can see clearly through the water, you know that we are developing and cleaning it up. And people mm -hmm. think this is a process that's really hard and it's not, it's not. And you'll know just by how clear it looks and how it seems like it's just changing overnight. That's what they need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Setting examples of what, and that's what they said, you know, from, May and June and the beginning of July, stay in nature, pay attention to what's going on in nature. And that's what I want to do. And I think it sounds like that's what you're going to do too. Oh yeah. We got the beautiful fences back. We trimmed the plants. We are planting new things. We're going to have strawberries. We're going to have black currants. We're going to have other types of berries and other types of fruits growing. So it's fantastic. The grass is so lush and green. It's just everything is so green. Wow. And it's beautiful. And it's like things don't have to stay the same. There, there could be better change. There could be improvements. And we're seeing a lot of that. And it's just how we prepared for this before is so important. Mm -hmm. Being prepared for it. Well, I want to see you know, actual man and nature side by side working together, you know, not, you know, this is man's territory. This is animal's territory. I really want to see that combined together in a very high frequency. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, exactly. I treat, I have squirrels, I have raccoons, I have crows that come to, that I allow to roam freely on my land and, uh -huh. and I offer food to sustain the creatures. And I have all kinds of different species of birds as well. So my little land is a sanctuary for the animals. I don't mistreat the animals. The neighbor's cats are also welcome. Um, I've, have, I've had skunks once in a while. So mm -hmm. everybody's welcome as long as they get along and play well and play nice together. The skunk wasn't playing well with the raccoons. so he had to be sort of boarded up a little bit. So he, he can eat in another area of the property, but away from right. the raccoons um, and the cats. So things are changing, things are wrapping up, the energies are moving and it's for the better because again, old has to fall away and the new come in. Yep, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, did you wanna go over some of those pictures? Yes, please show me. Well, um... So the thing is, is the main thing that I uh, been drawing is a uh, creator in three, they're like 5D and um, what it looks like. And I always show that he's in a cloak. The cloaks show their past. They show kind of the wars they've been through, what they've been through, how they represent that and all that stuff. And when I did that picture of creator, 
um, he always shows he'll be leading us into the new energy. And I'm like paying attention to it, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking that doesn't apply yet. But we're getting to that point that it does. So, and in that picture on Instagram, it shows him going into the light, leading us into the new energy. And that's the thing. So this one was done two years ago where you can tell, you know, in the tree, we've always known it's a seed of this planet. Mm -hmm. You know, the tree is always at the bottom of the earth and everything. And then his energy going and then showing the pyramids, three pyramids always meant the energy of working together. And then going into the seven sister system of the stars. And then leading up to the real sun that's outside the firmament. Um, and then going into his diamond, which is connect to our conscience. And then following us into the new energy. Guiding wow. us into the new energy. And that's the same thing that I have kind of on Instagram. How we're going into those... Uh, that energy we're following through, like we said, with that female energy that's existing, that's warm, that's of a different energy that we're following. We are um, just continually following through and getting into a higher perception of feeling it. And mm -hmm. like they, they always say love for humans, they th is different from the love that is here. Because that love is everything is connected at once on a consistent basis. You don't debate whether you love it or not. You just, there's an existence of knowing that you mm -hmm. do. Yeah. And so, and that's the thing that, that changes. And then where I figured out that we, I, I talked to you about the Ruby Lake, you know, on the other side of the ice. And then, um, and then we actually found those locations. I sent you pictures of those mm -hmm. actual maps to Google map. You can find it and see it. And there's just everywhere. But then they said, you know, Jen, the Ruby slippers were always the Ruby Lake, you know? And so you got stairway to heaven, that song, and you got, uh, follow the yellow brick road. Everything went to where it started. It was on the other side of the ice. Everybody, knew that it started there and that paradise was completely a paradise before the ice was taken over to keep the reptilians around you know because they need a different frequency so i mean and this is the and i've showed you this picture of the ruby lake mm -hmm. on this and then i did the process of finding that and doing this research and we found it and all that stuff so you know, we're going into this different paradise, but also they show these pyramids that were three uh, futuristic pyramids, they said. These are futuristic, and they will form on the other side of the ice, too, but eventually it'll shift. And so it was really weird because those look like something that you would see on a ship. The, you know, it was a clear white inside. It was just a sterilized in a different way you know and i'm just thinking oh, i see it moving the floors are not one level and everything it was very cool the way it looked like but they always led me they showed me the fountain of youth and then going through that process on humble healing too and then they're like see this was always here these tropic pools all this stuff these pyramids have always been here so it was very different to know to actually see white pyramids in a futuristic process i mean doesn't you find that interesting that i have something you just don't think about you know that well, they've been around and well i have thought about it it looks similar to what the beautiful paradise in egypt looked like with the white pyramids and the caps the golden capstones that's what these futuristic ones look like because i saw that that interesting crystalline infused pyramid that you drew i saw that and i'm like ah that looks like some of the ancient egyptian pyramids way back when when they weren't stripped of that technology right and we're going you know we're going back in into that process and you're seeing like 
all these artifacts are finally they're just surfacing left and right and left and right. They don't have a choice because it's it's coming. You know, the Euphrates River, the stuff that's coming out of there, you know, and it's just like, it's just meant to be shown. All the stuff they've been hiding for years and years and years and years, they can't hide it no more. And so we're finally recognizing everything. And just like this ruby uh, lake they showed in Antarctica, they're like, Jen, the Grand, um, the Grand Canyon was the same. It's just been picked through, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then they're finding stuff in, in that area too. So everything has been pushed down in our grounds and now it's resurfacing. Yeah. You know, the, the Grand Canyon, when I see the Grand Canyon, I see sort of like three chambers in cavern systems. And these chambers have light field technology and they have sort of, disc plates that harmonize in the light field and they have light codes that spin. So, and they have vibrational frequencies. When you step into that light field, it heals you. It somehow heals you in the light field and the codes vibrate. So it has to do with DNA light codes. This technology vibrates on a different scale in the Grand Canyon and these chambers have these spinning discs, light discs, and the light. So that's what I see. That's something that somebody has gone into, but not fully understood this technology. Right. Yeah, and I think it's great because, um, and I think it's overwhelming for people to see it and go, they were so advanced, and we are just completely dumbed down in the society of keeping us capsized. Mm -hmm. And now everything is coming out to the top and just imagine how advanced we're going to be in just 10 years of just catching up and getting things going. Um, you know, like they're showing me and I, I showed how homes were going to be the, like these home pods that everything you have in them has uh, everything that you need futuristic and everything and how they can move and all that stuff. We don't, have to be uh, walking in this egotistical uh, mirage of feeling the bigger, the better. It's not, it's never been bigger, the better. That's just feeds the human ego. And when you have everything that is content in a vessel, it's all you need. And then you develop into nature and you pay attention to humanity more. You have everything. What's the next thing to develop? And that's why I think, you know, I'm thinking to people and asking them this question is like, okay, just say society has everything they need. Just say their housing is met, they have the finances. See, you have to start thinking of the process, people, that after that, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to contribute after this? Where do you think you lie in that process? And that's why I think a year and a half ago, they had me started doing those uh, 40 contracts because some people don't know they're not at that process. And I think people right now in the world are just like, I just want the money. Okay. But there's after that is ended and you realize the money's not that important. There's another process that comes. What are you going to do for this world? What are you feel how you're going to contribute? And this is the thing uh, I bet you've probably thought about this too is you're going to see a lot of people in our field just completely drop off after they get their money because there's a difference. Some of us, it resides in the core of our soul that we are on this path for eternity until the creator says we are done. So we don't, it's not going to be about the money. We're going to go, okay, what's next? We got the funding. Great. Now what's the next process we need to do? And that's what I'm, I want to get to the next process of what we need to do after this after all that, because that's already happening. So we need to go forward and talk about that because people are not talking about the next process. They're just infatuated with the flush money. Don't you think that's? Yeah, for me, is? yeah, for me, it's never been about money. It's the spiritual job that I do that resonates and vibrates with my soul, what I am called for destined to do soul purpose soul mission 
I do the work that is part of my soul resonance. And it's not about how much money you get, what you do with that money. I'm fine with money is just an energy process of, of taking care of the necessities in life, but it doesn't take care of the energetic frequency. That's what right. I've always thought. So for me, I'm already doing the spiritual work I plan to do onwards and upwards forever on end, regardless of what's, what system has left and what has replaced something better. I'll, I'll know what my spiritual work will be, what my path is, even in the future, because I've seen it. I'm already doing it. You're already doing it. It just will change and grow and evolve as we go right. forwards with it. Right. And that's the thing. And I'm, I'm more excited about that process than I am, you know, what we're doing right now. I'm more like, okay, let's get to the next level and go, you know, because that level seems like it's going to be a lot more faster and more of the higher technology is going to be a play into that. And it's going to make things happen faster, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I think uh, people are really going to understand you know, as they've always looked at nature and just say a percentage of society, how if you're oblivious to it, you're not paying attention to the language that's there. How the winds, the water, the plants, the animals are in the same vibration. There is a language. And once the, you understand that there's always was a language of nurturing because that all is in consigned in one system. And tapping into them to understand that that has a process that has emotion feelings that has an end path of energy that you want to tap in and use now you know um, and that's why it's so hard for some of us we can't even watch anything with animals being hurt it's worse than anything for us and it it hits us quick you know in seconds um, and so a lot of us are already in that process. So, and the next process is the travel that contains with that, that we'll be evolving into. And, you know, it's, it's a different intuitive, it's a different remote viewing as you're going to a different process and you know you're there and you're observing it in a longer stage of diving through the information. You know, those are things that I'm excited about of those processes. Yeah, and I'm excited about, about the cleaning house, just discovering what the truth is, discovering what the frequency of forgiveness is and forgiving those that have been less than or not enough or whatever to themselves and others, the interactions on the human level, forgiving that, releasing that and not letting it sit in the soul field. Like, forgive. Whatever the betrayal was, whatever the issue was, forgive it release it from your soul field, release it from the other person's field, let it go and let it be. If that relationship is meant to sustain itself and survive, it will. If it's not, then the environment will change and other beautiful things will come in to replace it. And these people don't have to stick around together just because. They don't right. have to. If it doesn't vibrate, it just doesn't, and things can shift and change. Forgive, release, Forgetting doesn't work anymore. You can't forget anything. You can't go backwards. You can only go forwards, but you can forgive and release that frequency and move upwards and just work on yourself, work on the healing, do the work, and it does work. What did you scuff what did you discover in the Euphrates? Because you did remote viewing of the Euphrates River. You know, the thing is, is people, you know, the concept of those beings being uh in a process where they're tied down there and they're not tied down in a physical way. They're showing me these weapons, these energy weapons that keep them in that process. And at levels, they show levels of resistance, levels that they resist it, you know, that it's not as strong and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, what is going to happen at the end of that is the process of releasing that. So, we're going to get to a process with that, that those, um, I would say those fallens are going to be took to another place that is not on this earth and it has nothing to do with man's, uh, 
process in this. They, they put them here and now they're going to take them back where they need to go. And they'll, I think one day you'll hear them and you'll see all that. And the next day it's going to be gone. And I think a lot of the processing that's going on that a lot of the areas have nothing to do with man's opinion of it. They're just doing what they need to do in the higher spiritual realms and taking care of it the way they need to. And that's why you're seeing these earthquakes and these, um, these areas of water running that uh, I think sometimes humans make too much about them and they don't, they're not seeing the universal process that's going on with this cleanse of everything, of the energy. And they, I know when I did download, they said, we are taking every crumb, every frequency of the negative off this planet, everything. And I believe, and they, you know, as it will turn to ash again, it will turn to ash again. But you will know the story of the tale that was once told. So I think with that, there's going to be some evidence of how it left this planet and you're going to see the history of it but they show me these um just like they did on the the giants how they sh carried these frequency um rods and stuff like that that they use to maintain things so i'm seeing that in that process again so with that euphrates how it dried up almost you know just taking an energy and just completely drying it up so fast i don't think it's a process like humans think it is it is overnight and how it's just been drained um and when they are able to walk through that valley and see just like they did with the giants you're going to see the proof of it there and how um how were these uh beings fed what, you know and all that that process so i think we're in that um those times but also when i did the holy land they recently, they've told me three years, you know, once the, the ground of the shovel hits and they make the new temple, that will be the beginning of the end. There will be a new war that's created there that has nothing to do with man again. It has to do with good and bad energy. And that the levels of ground there that are cities that were underneath will come to the surface because they said recently we're going to drown out that area and you will see everything surface but they also said you know everybody thinks the horsemen are these again humans and they're like no these are spirits from the past and you'll hear that sound of the horsemen riding through but you're not going to see it because they are spirits of the past that come to collect what is left here that needs to go back and these doors of portals will open and they will take that again that's what they've showed me mm -hmm. and the holy land that could be israel that could be jordan that could be well it is the holy land because they showed me all the churches combined on that mountain together that city it is to cover up the ultimate energy that is underneath they ararat is it mount ararat yes and um once that energy is revealed all the underground cities will fall and everything was going to surface and it's starting to um and it's like on top you're seeing that collage of confusion on purpose because if they really knew what was underneath the ground that's what they're really arguing over, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, and then they've showed me that they're not just with the, for Euphrates rivers. He goes, there are things under that ground that are good that have been contained also, and those need to be set free too. intelligent beings. So that is, then they've always said, that's the last fight. That's the last battle that you're going to see and witness. And these battles are not in the battle part. They said they're in the mountains, they are in the skies, they're in levels of battles. And they showed me that. And they're like, pay attention to your skies. Because there's the golden keys of Solomon that yeah. are under the Temple Mount, the current one that was destroyed. 
and Arcs of the Covenant, remnants of the Ark of the Covenant technology. And when right. that rises, you can't take it back anymore. Nope, you can't. So that's, that's another uh, to bear witness, to um, see, to learn from, to process. But, and that's the process of getting into um, something in history that these other beings have been waiting for to arise, to come. You know, like I said, I felt like every energy, I keep checking, they're like, they're all here. They're all here. Everything is here for this time uh, that is happening in our world to take back what needs to go back and what needs to be released will be released. But in the foundation of the light and all that is evil will never be in the books of history. It will be an existence of dust that will not be talked about again. Yeah, that makes sense because we're going through a cleansing process. Clean house, clean house, clean house. Whenever, whenever I was doing that energy update, I was getting, I was getting clean house, clean house, clean everything, top to bottom. Make sure the processes are all clean and that it is in the pure energy and vibration of the highest light and the highest source. Right. It's uh. And that's why I'm like telling everybody, you need to be paying attention to storms and not thinking one storm is one storm. There are levels of storms. Now, are they using that for cover-ups? Of course. But you can catch a glimpse of things and analyze them and feel it, too, also. And the people, the frequency and the energies of the people, pay attention to that, too, because that tells you something about yourself and others how pure the soul vibration is, how pure the intent, how pure the action of yourselves and others. Right. And I think with that, they've showed New York on how these components of organic cloning or these ones are just going to fall into the city. And a normal human thinks they're going to, these are humans. And they're like, no, they're not. Their whole cord is connected, is severed, and they'll never rise upon and stand on their feet again because they were never with a soul never you know and that that process of that happening and like i said the inner cities you're going to see all these white uh buses with dark windows going in and out of those cities to vent those out um and i think people have uh, seen them several times and i've said that two and a half years ago about these buses so, you know, you're going to have a containment in these other, you know, these cities that are resisting giving up, but there's going to be a filter process through that. Uh, you always have to corner the rat in a corner. You know, it's always at the end. It's always going to have to be a filter in some way. And we're in that process. It's happening. And which of these foundations are crumbling? You mentioned the bridges and that certain bridge its foundation was crumbling yeah they showed me that buildings and bridges would crumble um and that's on the, the resistance side of some of the negative because their attitude is if we can't have it we're going to make sure you don't and so that's just like a five-year-old reacting to tearing something down or getting attention for some reason so um, and I think that was like, you know, 10 days ago, the one went out on uh, uh, New Jersey. I think it was New Jersey. I'm not sure I sent it to you. Um, a bridge went out on that. Uh, they had a bombing. And then I posted that on February 22nd. Uh, they are showing me bridges and buildings. So, um, and that, not just one or a couple, there's going to be a couple that happen. And then the, the buildings, there's going to be some process, um, crumbling but i believe with the 3d capitalism you're going to see each of those corrupt corporations come down with your eyes and seeing the building crumble yeah like it that makes sense because i was seeing old foundations crumbling in the energy update that could be physical things crumbling and i i was shown physical things that don't work anymore crumbling 
foundations. Right. That bridge no longer stands for what it is. The foundation is broken. It'll crumble and something new and better will come in to replace it. That will actually work. So old things going down does not mean it's a bad thing. It could just allow for improvement, for more decent energy to come in to build something that will work, that is better for our future. You know, neutralizing, as in going back to your true gardens, the process of manufactured uh, powdered dust, I don't even call it food, is going to be gone. But what were the components that were in there, the chemicals that were in there will be seen too, what you've been putting in your system. But that's, you know, that's falling down in that process alone too. And there's interesting aspects of, let's replace the meat with cricket substitute. And that's the new meat made out of crickets. It's also biological matter. But it's not real meat. It doesn't have that same protein. It's not organic meat. No, it's not. And I mean, programs, you know, maybe not human programs will think that's a appetizing, but I don't think there's a lot of people that understand the nutrients of meat and to crave that. So I don't think that's ever going to process. Well, in some products, it says there's insects, crickets. Hey, in some countries, that's a delicacy. That is a delicacy. Some people, worms, spiders, crickets. Uh, I don't. I don't think I would want to to eat that. No. <laughs> it, it's just weird. But that's that's a system. We see that as a system. It's like, hey, let's introduce them instead of a meat. This is the new meat substitute. Crickets in your food. Right. No. <laughs> nope um and that's that's the thing you know thank god i grow my own meat um <laughs> and th there's the big difference i mean they're talking about ground beef where it has a slime stuff on it which is not good mm -hmm. um natural red meat uh you can just it's pure that's the difference the purity of the goodness um and i think we're going back to that and little by little but we are reaching back to that understanding of we want to know where our food is grown we want to know what's in the food now people are reading the labels and paying attention to things where they were not before they were not yeah i only get organic eggs and i know they're not going to take taste like plastic and as an experiment i bought normal eggs that are not organic and free range, the chicken needs to be free range for the eggs to be organic and good. I bought the normal eggs and man, my omelet tasted like plastic and it fell apart. The free range eggs were strong, hearty, and it didn't fall apart when I picked up the omelet with the spatula. It went beautifully on the plate and it looked good. It wasn't super yellow and slimy right. where the normal eggs that are not free range, it just, it just fell apart. The whole omelet was in little pieces. And when I tasted it, it tasted like plastic. Obviously, the chickens aren't grown correctly. The eggs are not hatched correctly. It is very synthetic. And you can taste the difference. Right. Yeah, it's a uh, natural eggs have a very yellow, yellow, dark, orange uh, purity to it. Um, they always have. And these light colored looking uh, yolks are, they're trying to fool you. They, they are indeed, and it does not taste good. And it tasted awful. And I'm like, okay. Uh, and they have a number, born three, born organic. On the egg, it is it says that. I'm like, okay, clue into the label of the egg, how the egg was made. Right, that's crazy. Because I had chickens for a while, and there was a lot of work, and then my neighbor said, take them, and then I just buy the eggs from him. And so I just get the eggs fresh, too. So, and those, I think, just you're going to see a difference is farmer markets are going to just take off this spring. Everybody's going to buy at farmer markets, because they know that I've made this. We, we know which uh, families made pure meat, pure everything. So... And that's the whole thing. I mean, um, it's nothing they were ever going to stop. 
you know, you can stop the process of money and they'll find a way to survive through bargaining and trading. It's just the way it is. They've learned it a long time ago. And it will all, that will always forever be a process in our system of figuring that out, just our nature to, to yeah, survive. And, and a long time ago, we were taught gold and silver are natural resources to always seek those resources because they'll always work as a, yeah. as a barter system. So people will just mine for gold and silver more and, and look to barter and trade. It, it is a frequency shift change and we're in the process of it. You can take away the paper money. That's just paper anyway and plastic. But the frequency will adjust and something, a barter trade system will come in without this paper stuff or the electronic digital credit card system. Here's my plastic, but that doesn't work anymore. Your plastic is no good here. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, starting from a new system, I think, you know, that's really going to change the energy on this planet is the worry of the finances when that literally does a 180 and flips and they don't have that people do not understand the creation of that energy does not feed the negative anymore there's it comes to a calmness a balance and that when that hits all at once that creates a awesome loving energy it's like wow so then you look at procreation and creating and and making something out of what the abundance that you have to express it in a different way in nature. So I think uh, that's important. Because I think I've always said that this process of what's going on is going to bring you to your knees, just in a humble way of honoring what we're in, what we're witnessing, what we're partaking in and developing in, and where we go from here. Yeah, exactly. Just going forwards in a better place, in a better vibrational frequency energy, and changing and evolving on the soul level. Evolution continues. It doesn't stop growing. Right. And that's why, you know, like I just talked about you earlier, is the fact that I decided to do a remote viewing on the firmament. Because Elon Musk brought it up. He's like, I can't do anything because that's there, and none of my rockets are getting past it. And so he's acknowledged it and people are, you know, finally understanding the whole process that we're in a fish tank. Um, and I have said, well, you've shown me what's in the bottom. So I might as well go up above and see in the layers. I want details, you know, just uh, this is the firmament. I'm like, no, I want more. I want details of what things look like and the levels that they are and how it holds and everything. So I think that's going to be an interesting remote viewing to look at that how we're contained in that process and how that's going to end too, you know, um, as the well, ice caps. Well, the, the not so good ones figured out how to get around the firmament and start secret space programs on the moon and Mars. So some of them right. have figured out a way around it with yeah, anti gravity cool. technology. Yeah. There's one door in and out and it's yeah. not above under the ice yeah um, they they figured out how to leave the planetary system and go to other planetary rock forms and build out their bases and anti-gravity but normal rockets don't really deliver the payloads that far you don't get that far off the planet well you can get to the space stations but don't get beyond certain points and because the technology is not up to snuff, not up to date. Elon spaceships, they're not up to date. They will explode. They, it's a whole different system again. Yeah. That. It is funny that you, you know, cause you kind of joke and go, you're still selling that rocket crap. You're still thinking that that's uh, futuristic is not. And that's way beyond old functioning process. It doesn't take no rocket to get um, anything out in space anymore. We know that. Um, yeah. But I would like to, you know, to see the true space, mm -hmm. remove the first, see that the people see the same stars. They go, don't you understand how big the universe is? So these stars would change. 
if you got to see the clear view of the space, you know, so that would clearly change in the way we see things. I mean, we're getting there, but um, everything's a process of layers and our conscience has to evolve. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us are just like, we want that to be in it and we want to be in it now. We don't want to wait for everybody else. We want to go. Yeah, and I've been seeing portals opening in and people going in and ending up on different planets and different realities, dimensions. It's like this long tube-like energy opens. A person may be in the park, they're just walking and, and the energy goes, whoosh, sucks them in and they end up elsewhere. And when they end up elsewhere, they're like bilocated. And they're going, where am I? What is this? So portals are opening up and closing in layers because the energy is changing. So the portals are opening more up and down and people that 411 people disappearing, most likely they stumble in portals and just go. Whoop. Sometimes right. they're found, sometimes they're not because the portal just opens up in the space, goes through the tube, through the energy. And you can end up beyond the firmament somewhere else because nature is taking care of itself. Mm -hmm. It is rebuilding itself, reworking itself. So these portal frequencies can pop up here and there and people are like, where am I? Where did I go? What reality am I in? And then sometimes the portal can go and deposit them back where it took them from. Because again, that higher awareness, what's beyond 3D is so important. That's what's beyond 3D. Other systems are realities. Yeah, I know, it's insane. Yeah, and it, it's, they, it's just what I, the way I look at it. What humans think they love and they know, that's because what you've been told to know and love. But when you understand what is for you, that your soul will be satisfied with. Like I tell people, there's not gonna be sports. You're not gonna be occupied with entertainment and TV because that's all been a program to occupy your mind. And now let's move all that aside and get with the real teaching, with the real education, with the real information and start to develop in your brain that you only use a percentage of anyway. Let's go up to full capacity of actually using it and start to have our children, um, you know, educated in a higher understanding of understanding. And um, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for the education system to be completely dismantled. It's not even an education system. It's a programming system. And, you know, that's, that's going to change too. Uh, your kids that you're seeing that are born now are going to be hundred times smarter than we are now in this process of things. So and, the future is looking bright. And you've changed your space. You really, you've thrived in, because you're in a different place. How did that work for you? How, what was the process? Well, the thing was, is I, for actual spirit, um, to do a spirit circle with me, and feel comfortable and with frequency and sound because I'm using more sound and vibration. Um, I needed a house for the center, you know, to do and feel completely relaxed. In an office building, it wasn't working for me. I felt limited to do the things I want to do. If I need to be outside in the sun and in the moon, I need to be outside in the, those areas. And I can do that here. Um, I couldn't do it there, you know, and there's days I'm like, I just want to see the, feel the sun. I can open up my windows and just embrace all that sun in or put in the living room area that I need. So I needed a new uh, place for spirits energy to completely relax. And that's what I created because I was told to create it. And sometimes we just follow that instinct. And you seem, yeah, you seem more happier. You seem more grounded because you have several areas that where you can set up what you want and energetically feel it in a good vibration. And it's like me. I, I, I also found a house where I can live, but where I can also work. I have 
my healing office and then I have my healing meditation room slash Reiki, whatever. Like I could actually have a circle of people and teach there what I want to teach if I wanted to do that. I prefer to do the office thing or my healing office, but you know, it's like where you're called the most is where you go for with the frequency to make your change, to be happy. Exactly. It is. And then even if you resist it a little bit, because I was like, no, maybe not. And they're like, no, this is, this is it. This is it. This is it. And it was funny because the person that lived here before, she planted roses and flowers all around the place. Like it's already preserved for spring to come up and blossom in a certain way and use that and utilize it that energy and that's what i'm going to do yeah and you and you have the option maybe to buy the place down the road if you love it or try it out and see how it goes right you have options in the yep. space and you yep. get to see what works for you and what changes you want to do like you're in your freedom because you followed the calling in the past Right. And you were able to experience what that feels like and looks like to say, oh, I like this place. This works better. Let's try it. Same for me. I took four or five years to find a space I really wanted to be in where I'm happy in. This space is quiet. I have I have my window. I have my green space. I have my gardens. I can see the living nature out of my out of my window because it's mm -hmm. what I've created. Right. It's good to see. I don't know. It's be hard not to be able to access nature and do this work. It, it just feels like it's part of that process. And um, I like getting up at my farm. And then the first thing I see is the sun. You know, so that's a good thing. I was clearing off the porch, indoor porch. And then you know, that sun embraces in the summertime. And you can sit on the front porch and drink coffee and feel that sun. I think it's gonna, it's always important. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree with you. I can just open my window. I have the sun, I have the trees. Now that the trees have been trimmed, I can see more of the sun. And it was, for me, it was always like, I had four quotes for these hundred foot diadera. They're from the Himalayas. These are mm -hmm. diadera trees. So they're from the Himalayas. They need to be trimmed in a certain way where you leave enough of the canopy so that the trees still thrive and they don't die at the roots. But right. see, I have a roof line. So I found a beautiful arborist and he was like, well, here's how we can trim them so that they stay beautiful and healthy and they don't impose on your roof line and the safety of your roof. Everybody else said, we can't trim them that much because of this, this, and that. And this guy's like, we can do it in such a way we preserve your trees, we preserve your roof. Everything will be in nature. Everything will be in balance. When I was working with him, I'm like, this is a person who respects nature, but respects people's living spaces as well. And his crew did a wonderful job. They cleaned up after themselves. They did the trees beautifully. I have no regrets about how these trees were trimmed in the most sacred, safe way that made me feel comfortable. So I would recommend this guy to anybody. Because awesome. he'll awesome. respect your trees, he'll respect your property, they'll clean up after themselves, and they will ask you, so what do you think? Do you like it? Are you happy? And if you're not, they can adjust it. Because right. these guys work in nature. They respect nature. They do not destroy nature. They only work with trees and plants. So they, they, they do specific type of arborist work. And when I was, like, I was like, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. You did a great job. Because this guy loves and respects his work. And so does his crew. That's great. Yeah, it's always they did not use spikes on their shoes when they went up the trees. They had pulleys. They had the ropes. They did the rope oh. system. That's good. They, awesome. some, some people, some arborists, they use spikes on their shoes. Oh, yeah. And it makes holes in the tree. These guys, no. They use the pulleys. So every time somebody goes, what I learned is 
everybody, when you're going to trim trees, like I have big hundred foot diaderas, like five of them. If the guy says, I'm going to be wearing spikes on my shoes and going like this on your tree, don't, don't hire those people. That is going to destroy the bark on your trees. That is going to make right. holes in the trees. You want pulley system. Right. Ropes and ladders and the pulleys. Yep. That's it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> So, so this has been a great conversation, you know, and mm -hmm. I think in our future that we're going to do uh, another friend of yours all together for the uh, female energy to talk about that. Yeah, I will contact her because she, she is all about female. She's all about female feminine aspects and balancing the soul and the frequencies. Very respectful. So I will ask her to host us, please. And we can continue this beautiful discussion. Yeah, and I'll let you know when I get the other stuff done so we can go over that information. Exactly. Wonderful. And thank you again for coming on the show. Okay. Well, you have a good day. You have too. A good night. Bye, Jenny. Bye.